There are many more that have registered that I'm sure are going to sign up shortly. Um, but let's start out with thanking Rabbi Gilbert from OJE, his wife at Sheva, for arranging the, uh, for hosting the webinar. Very grateful to them. Shukoyach. And uh, thank you to all of you for joining us. Great to have you with us. And of course, a very big thank you to Rabbi Wan. Um, Rabbi Wan is uh, somebody who doesn't need an introduction to any of us in South Africa and to most Jews around the world. Rabbi Wan has been leading and educating and inspiring Jews around the globe for many decades. And uh, he has, has done so through his talks, through his books, through his tapes, his website, destiny.com, uh, rabbawan.com. Uh, rabbawan and uh, and we're uh, very grateful we're to very him grateful to for him. his very precious for his time, great. for sharing his wisdom with us in our preparations for Shavuos at the end of the week. Uh, Rabbi Wan will be speaking on Sefer, the book, Megillas Rus, the book of Ruth. Rabbi Wan, take us away. Thank you, Rabbi Sachstein. A pleasure to be with all of you. And uh, I hope that everyone is well and we uh, will all get through this, God willing. And uh, it will be an experience that we will always remember. But uh, I hope that we will grow from it as well. Anyway, uh, the uh, holiday of Shavuos is upon us one of the uh, Shalosh Regolim and uh, customary according to the uh, <coughs> Ashkenazi custom, but according to many other customs as well, the Rus is read uh, in Israel, it's read on the one day uh, here uh, in America and in uh, South Africa, It'll be read on Shabbat. The Book of Ruth uh, has many, many facets to it. All of Torah is uh, seen, uh, should be seen, at different levels. There's uh, what it says, and then there's a level of understanding, and then there's a level of application, and then there's a level of spirituality, and there's a level of eternity, and uh, all these levels exist. So I want to discuss with you uh, just two or three highlights from the Megillah of uh, all of which I think is, are, are very germane and telling to us, especially now. The first thing is, Resilience after tragedy. The book of Ruth begins that there's a wealthy family and they have uh, everything, uh, uh, children, they have wealth, they have stature. And what happens is uh, that uh, for various reasons, which uh, the rabbis deal with, uh, they leave the land of Israel and move to the land of Moab because of a plague. Uh, it's an epidemic. It's hunger. It's a very bad uh, crop. There will not be enough food to eat. Chazal. Uh, portray it in a uh, critical form by saying that uh, he was afraid that he would be so burdened by poor, by requests, that uh, he would uh, therefore uh, be unable to have a normal life. So he leaves the land of Israel and goes to Moab there to escape. The only problem is in life, all know that there really are no ways to escape. 
and that because of that, therefore, our attempts to escape many times uh, appear uh, later to have been counterproductive. So he and his wife Naomi and their two sons, Machlon and Chilion, come to the land of Moab. So originally they're coming only for a while, not for an extended period of time. Uh, when the hunger will uh, disappear, they'll go back. But uh, what happens is that they settle there and they find life to be pleasant. And because of that, uh, they don't go back. And they become uh, Moabites, so to speak. And then tragedy strikes them. Macho Nechilio marry Moabite women, Orpa and Ruth. And the Tanakh, it says, they were there, that's, uh, they, that's it. They're uh, Moabites of the Mosaic persuasion. And then tragedy follows them. Machlon Achilion die. Her husband Elimelech dies. And Naomi is left alone, widowed. with two daughters-in-law who are not acceptable in Moabite society since they married the Jewish boys. According to the Medrash, they were, uh, they were princesses of Moab and uh, they lost their stature. So now you have, and this is in the ancient world, to be a woman alone was a great challenge. And Naomi is alone. And she herself uh, reviews what happened, the tragedies that have befallen her. And she has heard that the hunger is no longer an issue in the land of Israel. So she wants to go home. She wants to go to where she is comfortable, comfortable within herself, not comfortable in terms of society and wealth, but uh, she wants to go. We all have a desire to go home. So then the question is, what happens with these two daughters-in-law? Because to them, uh, Yehuda is not home. It's a strange land with a strange language, with a strange religion. But Naomi decides she's going. That's her resilience. She realizes that perhaps they made a bad mistake, but she's going to rectify it. She's going to go home. And uh, her two daughters in law accompany her part of the way. And she attempts to dissuade them. Alma Benosai, please, no. It's my fault. Rabbi Shalom has embittered me. 
go and go back and try and make a life for yourself in your homes. Try and marry and have a family, have a future. Don't, what are you coming with me, an old lady? What am I going to do for you? Orpa uh, agrees. So even though she puts up a front, I cannot desert you, I'm going to go with you. But she's not committed to go. A wonderful uh, expression here. Tishak es chamoso. She kissed Naomi, but she kissed her goodbye. Uh, Judaism does not last with a kiss. There has to be a much stronger commitment. There are a lot of people that kiss. But that doesn't do it. It's insufficient in the long run. Just to have an emotional attachment, as important as that is. But if that's all there is, so then it's too fragile to withstand the pressures of time and circumstance. So Orpa leaves, according to the Medrash, a remarkable Medrash, Orpa is going to be the uh, great grandmother of uh, the giant uh, Goliath of Goliath, so that the uh, Rus and Orpa will meet again in the form of David and Goliath. which is one of the ironies of life. And uh, it begins with Orpa's kiss. And from that comes this giant tyrant and uh, the young little shepherd boy that will save him. So now Rus is left with Nami. And Naomi uh, attempts to dissuade her. We have the uh, rudiments, uh, the framework of the conversion process in Jewish halacha. Ruth uh, accepts upon herself the uh, mitzvot, the idea of the uniqueness of the Jewish people. Your people are my people. Your God will be my God. She commits herself to the end. Only death will show we be departed. Naomi sees the depth of Ruth's commitment. So she leaves her alone. She no longer argues with her. That really is the structure that we have regarding conversion and converts. That when we become convinced that the convert really intends to accept Judaism, so then we teach the convert and welcome the convert. And uh, Rus uh, is going to be a high heroine, which is another lesson here of this entire book, is that uh, the Lord doesn't follow our blueprints. He has his own way of working out things. So that David HaMelech, who is the uh, monarch of the Jewish people, David HaMelech Yisrael Chai Vekayom, and David HaMelech, who uh, is the progenitor of uh, the Messianic time and of the Messiah, and David HaMelech, who is the symbol of everything great in Jewish life, uh, the Lord extracts him from 
Rus, uh, the Moabite princess from Lot, the nephew of Avram Avinu, who was not loyal to his uncle. So uh, we would not uh, think uh, very highly of uh, such a uh, yichus. We wouldn't say uh, that that really is the pedigree that we're looking for. But the Lord has his uh, own way, as we all know. And many times in life, the people that are chosen for greatness um, are not necessarily those that we ourselves would have chosen if we were the ones that had the ability to choose. I mean, Moshe Rabbeinu also. Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, he, he killed uh, an Egyptian. He runs away for 60 years. He's a shepherd. He's married the daughter of Yisro. He's a stammerer. You know, what are you talking about, right? Couldn't get a job as a rabbi. He would have come as a great teacher of humanity. Master teacher of humanity. So we always, one of the lessons here is that we always have to be less judgmental. We don't know how it's going to work out, and we don't know why, and we don't even know who. And that becomes very, very important. Now, it's not to minimize uh, or pedigree. It's not to minimize scholarly attainment, especially in Torah. But Harvey Shluchim Lamokov, the Rabbi Shalom has many agents that he works through. Human beings who have freedom of choice, but nevertheless, somehow, out of their own inner soul, follow the guidance of heaven and become the leaders and become the 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 game changers in Jewish life and in world history as well. So that should give us pause when we judge, because uh, who knows? Who, who knows? And when uh, Rus and Naomi come to base Lechem, uh, so uh, they don't get a very warm reception. Hazos Naomi, this is Naomi, I remember. She was such a fancy lady. She in rags. She was a princess. And now she's alone in the world. And look who she has as a daughter in law, a woman of Moab. And this was at a time, as the Gemara points out, that it was not clear that the, the women of Moab were not ex included in the uh, halacha that a Moabite could not become a convert. They didn't know yet Moabi v'lo Moabis, Amoni v'lo Amonis. They didn't, uh, they weren't accepted yet. So she's a pariah, stranger. And Naomi uh, agrees. Don't call me Naomi. Naomi is pleasantness, beauty. Krenali Mora, call me bitterness. Because I have suffered greatly. And that's the end of the first part. On a simple level. But again, with dramatic lessons for all of us.
So we would think that uh, Naomi should quit, right? She got home, okay, there's no future. Ruth has no future, nothing. But that's not the nature of Naomi. And that's not the nature of the Jewish people. And uh, Naomi is looking how to build a future, which is the main task of the Jewish people and of Jews individually, how to build the future. What about tomorrow? We call that resilience, whatever word you want to use. But it's a very necessary trait because life is full of blows and everyone is affected by them. I mean, I, what we're experiencing now, if somebody would have told you this six months ago, you'd say he's crazy. People, some people have lost everything. Then people have lost their lives. The whole psychology of the world has changed. So then the question is, what about now? What about tomorrow? What are we going to build? What would life have a meaning for us? I'm always struck by the uh, comparison uh, with uh, Noah when he comes out of the ark. So what does he do? See, the world's been destroyed. And uh, according to the Medrash, uh, because of the fact that he sees that everything has been destroyed, he, he's also destroyed. So Vayochel Noach, he became the he lost, he lost the future. He lost the holiness. Climbed to the vineyard, and out of that, that came all sorts of problems. Avroma Vinu, after every trouble, he looks to the future. He stands up. He's looking to the future. Now what are we going to do? And uh, the last hundred years in Jewish life is a testimony to that. Jewish people were destroyed. So it's easy to say, let's forget the whole thing. And there were many who said that. And there were many who said there's no hope for the future. And that we might as well give up. But it hasn't turned out that way. Again, because of the resilience, because the willingness to look to the future. So Naomi is looking to the future. And she says, I'm going to look. And he says to Ruth, and look at Manoach, Sheyit Allah. But you should find a good situation that will be good for you, etc. He doesn't tell her, go quit. I can't help you anymore. It's all over. And that's a remarkable trait. And that's why in the book of Ruth, Naomi is really the heroine. Even for more so we see it later. It says, you la ben Naomi. Naomi had the child. Naomi didn't have the child. The child was had by roots. But Naomi is the one that created the situation that you could have a child. My Daughter, I'm going to find for you a situation that something can be in. And here all sorts of strange things happen. She goes to the field to collect, to glean grain. And somehow uh, she comes across Boaz. Uh, Boaz is... Uh, 
according to Chazal, he is the Shofet Yitzun. He's the leader of the tribe, the leader of Israel. He's not a young man anymore. He himself also has just suffered tragedy. According to the Medrash, his wife has passed away. Now, if the, I want to tell you, we are all uh, natural shatronim, right? To be a Jew, you know, I know a boy and you know a girl and we're going to put them together and everybody's in the business. But if you wanted to be a shatron here, you would never put the two together. You would never in your wildest dreams, you know, send the resume of Ruth to Boaz, or vice versa. So here we have uh, the, the, another prime example of how heaven uh, mocks us. Uh, it's not the same way I see that. I do things differently, says. Because we are limited as human beings. Our knowledge is limited, our foresight is limited, our tastes are limited. The Ramona Shalom has no limits. And since he has no limits, everything is possible. And what we regard as impossible is what always happens. If you look again, uh, the story of the last hundred years of the Jewish people, it's the story of impossibilities. None of it could have happened, but it all happened. I think if everybody looks uh, at the history of South African Jewry, you'll also say none of this could have happened. And if we look at our own personal families and our own personal life, none of this could have happened. But, uh, yeah. but here is a look, it's all happened. And here it is, stares us in the face. A remarkable, remarkable thing. And that's how to view things. So a person should never say, as we said before, I give up. That's not allowed. And a person should never say, it can't be. Because somehow what can't be is or will be. And we cannot say cavalierly that we know what the future brings. So Naomi engineers this shidduch. And Boaz, again, Boaz is... A, <laughs> almost trapped by the circumstances. He finds a woman sleeping next to him. He doesn't know what to do. And not only that, with the acquisition of Rus, uh, he has to redeem property. There's an estate that has to be settled. And all sorts of problems here. So Boaz himself hesitates, as anyone would. And so he says to her, you know, yes, I'm going to take care of you. Because you should know that there is someone who has a prior claim to the matter there's someone else that's ahead of me and if he wants to exercise his option then i have to let him do it so that's uh, the escape clause of boaz so to speak which we can well identify with i believe Now, the man who has this prior right is a man named Tov. 
What a wonderful name. In Hebrew, we find the name often for women, Tova. But we don't find it in popular use as a name for boys because of this story. Because here he's named Tov, and Boaz gives him the whole proposition. Elimelech has fields. They were, we have the right of redemption to get the fields back, the property, to settle the estate. It's a good deal. Property in the land of Israel is worth money. It always goes up. You know, all of us could have bought Rechab here 40 years ago for half the price today. So I'm giving you a good deal. A wise investment. And Tov says, great, you know. But then uh, Boaz adds the uh, further problem here that uh, with the redemption of the property comes Rus. And Tov backs off. Penashki says, Nachalos. Because uh, I don't know, you know, who knows what's going to be here. But negative things will occur. I pass on it. And Boaz had committed, he said, If Tov is willing to redeem you, then he'll redeem you. Vimlo, and if he does not, Chai Hashem, he takes an oath on Ochi Egoel, I will redeem you. Before she say he takes the oath because of the fact that otherwise he would waver at the end as well. He knew himself. He knows the risk involved here. He knows what they will say. Can you imagine? Be written up in the newspaper. Boaz marries Ruth. Right, it would be uh, Prince Charles marries Diana. Tabloid thing. But he took the oath. And therefore he marries her. And they have a child. And as I mentioned before, when the child is born, a Tomarna Hashino Slaymor, all of the neighbors, the women said, You la ben Lamomi, oh look what Nomi did here. Nomi has a child. Nomi has a future. And what a future. Oved, Ishai, David, what a future. Who would have imagined such a thing? But the Torah teaches us how to look at life. And life is nothing but a series of challenges, of crises, of varying degrees of intensity, naturally. But uh, you know, no one passed through this world unscathed. It says in the post, like a person is born for toil, for the challenge of it. Ashri mi shamulo batora. Fortunate is the person that realizes that these toils have a spiritual value to them. It would define our purpose of life. That's our chance for greatness and eternity. It's the building block to our future.
and then that becomes the greatness of the story of the characters in this book, in this little Megillah. Because this is the story of life, story of human beings. It's not a fanciful story. It's told as, as a narrative, almost uh, as a short story. I once read that this is the classic short story of biblical literature. But we can't view it that way. This is the classical story of us, of what we are supposed to be. So we're all Naomi, and we're all Rus, and we're all Boaz. And we try not to be Elimelech, and we try not to be Tov, not to miss the opportunities that are granted to us. And the opportunities always come at the moment of challenge, the moment of crisis. So uh, as we recover from this uh, pandemic, this crisis that has befallen us and all of mankind, uh, we have to look to the future. We have to build our future and to build it on positive Torah values, on Jewish resilience, on appreciation of what we are and what we should be doing and who we are, not to be cowed by it, not to somehow feel that, uh, what can I do? I can do a lot. I have to try and do what I can. So I think that it's very instructive for us even on the surface of this study of the Book of Rus, because it speaks to us. The Torah itself says, the uh, Sefer told us Odom. It's the book of human beings. The Torah is not a book of laws, it's a book of life. And that's how we have to look at it and appreciate it, fulfill it and follow it. So I want to wish you all a very happy Yom Tov. You and your families, everyone should be well. And the Mirza Hashem will all get to see each other in person. In your Shalim. And be well, everyone. And thank you for listening. Cold to sell. Thank you, Rabbi Wan. Yeah, thank you, Rabbi Wan. It was beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Look after yourself and have a wonderful Yom Tov. And Rabbi Gilbert's going to close off for us. Rabbi Wan, it's a real honor real. and pleasure to, uh, to have you. Literally, we feel in South Africa, you've been a pioneer of vision. And uh, only when you can really look in your past in your history and realize where your future is, that's really the story of the Jewish people. And there's no one who's illustrated that to us more than you in your vision of putting movies together with Rashi and Rambam and giving over thousands and thousands of lectures about what Jewish history is and enlightening the Jewish people with everything that you've given. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be able to host you for this uh, period of time, short period of time before Shavuot. And, uh, you know, Rabbi Saxton has had a very close Kesha with you for many years. And it's just a real, real pleasure and honor to have you here. And we just want to thank you for your precious time. And uh, we really, really think that this has been an amazing opportunity for the South African jury to be able to enjoy these words of wisdom and we wish you a wonderful yontif and thank you for everything that you've done for us thank you rabbi gilbert
Thank you to all the listeners out there. We hope that you have a wonderful uh, evening and thank you for sharing and being part of our experience this evening. Look after yourselves, stay safe and be blessed.